Communication Protocol, lecture by Professor Seeger. When I started my career, uh, this was the late 80s, early 90s, there were three ways that we could communicate, three channels through which we could uh, exchange information. I could write you a letter, I could call you on the phone, and I could send you a fax. That was pretty much it. So we built millions of dollars worth of work through those three channels, that was it. Now, if you want to get picky, the letter could go first class, which would take three, four days, or it could go overnight. Both are called a letter, but they have different time frames. So we used to send a fax and then back it up with a first class letter, but we did a lot of overnight mail. Those are the only three, and we always knew which one to pick. We, we knew which one to pick by what's the nature of the communication and how urgent is the response. Also, uh, privacy wasn't so much of an issue. I should say that we would have in real life meetings. Uh, that's a lot like a phone call, but more better bandwidth, better communication. Not everybody would be invited to the same in real life meeting. So I could correct myself, perhaps there were four. What are those four? that I've mentioned so far. <laughs> Tell her, take me back to the 80s. Uh, facts. Facts. Letter. Letter. Phone call. Phone call. Interpersonal. In real life meeting. Yeah. That's great. We now have a myriad of ways to communicate. We have so many different ways, so many different channels to communicate that it's not clear which one we should pick. Should I send a tweet? Should I send a direct message tweet? Should I send an email? Should I call on the phone? Maybe I should Snapchat. Maybe I should kick. Maybe I should use Tumblr. Maybe I should post a comment on Instagram, for goodness sakes. And I haven't even exhausted all of the different technical possibilities. And so instead of people finding each other in the right channels, people are often picking channels that don't match up. I sent you an email. Did you get my email? Well, yeah, that's the way email works, if you remember that tweet. Um, but if you weren't looking for an email, or you weren't anticipating that the email was urgent, you might have responded in a way that didn't land with the person that's trying to have a conversation with you. So when people are working in teams today, it helps their communication to have an explicit protocol for which channel we're going to use. And there are two criteria that are important in choosing a channel. The first one I'm going to call privacy. How private is your communication? And the more private ones are going to go at the top. The least <laughs> private ones, the 100% public ones, they're going to go at the bottom. The second dimension I'm going to call urgency. And by urgency, I mean how quickly are you expecting a response? Now what we have to do, we created this Cartesian plane system. Now what we have to do is populate this with our preferred choices. What's the most urgent that we could expect a response? Cut. Text message. No. <laughs> Give me, this is in units of time. <clears throat> immediate. Phone There's call? nothing more urgent than immediate. <laughs> if, so a phone call? How, no. How quick <laughs> is, as, like I'm going to answer the freaking phone. No, you're going to leave me a voicemail. That's not urgent. How, uh, how soon is as soon as possible? As soon as possible is like, I guess when you get around to it. Immediately is unambiguous. Immediately means stop anything that you're doing right now, in this moment. So all the way over on the right, we have immediately, I'm expecting a response. Send an ambulance. Yeah. A 911 call <laughs> is immediate. You're not like, yeah, I'm kind of bleeding out of my eyeballs here, so whenever it's convenient for you. <laughs> it's immediate. Now, is a 911 call, we know, that, we know now where to put it on our scale of urgency. How public is a 911 call? Is it private? No. You've never heard a 911 call played uh, you know, on television? <laughs> You've never heard a 911 recording go viral on YouTube? 911 is absolutely public. A reporter or anyone else can make a freedom of information request that pulls the 911 call. 
That makes 911 public as opposed to private and urgent as opposed to not urgent. We would put 911 here. If you have an emergency related to this class that's urgent and public, yeah, call 911. You know, a light fixture blows up, the classroom's on fire. This is a good example of where it's urgent and you want everybody to know about it. Great. Let's do more. Something that's not as urgent as 911, but it's still urgent, another channel that we would use when we're expecting a response in real time. Uh, forgotten your name, please remind me. Dylan. Dylan, thank you. Um, a phone call. A phone call, that sounds good. Less urgent than 911? Yeah. Because you might wind up leaving a voicemail. How public or private is a phone call? I'd say so. Like you can, um, you can do a three-way call. You used to have this thing called a party line. You can do a conference call, but it certainly isn't public. So we got to put uh, a phone call to the left of 911 and above 911. Let's put a phone call here. Do we use the phone in CE 300? You might use the phone amongst yourselves. In your group work, we don't use the phone in class. We don't make phone calls. You don't have to call me up. They'd be like, oh, excuse me, I have to take this. It's from uh, Jonathan in the front row. That doesn't make any sense. So phone is not a protocol that we use in class, and it's not a protocol you're using with me. But it might be a protocol that you use in your group work. Another, um, another <laughs> channel, urgent, not as urgent as 911. What Emailing. Else is that more urgent or less urgent than 911? Everything's less urgent than 911. More urgent or less urgent than a phone call? It is less urgent. So email's got to go to the left of a phone call. What's your expected response time on an email? Vid. I think you're on the right track, Vid. Uh, somewhere between two or three days. There used to be a rule of thumb in the 90s when email was new. And people were like, yeah, you should respond to emails in less than 24 hours. Nobody cares anymore. Because that was, email was new and we didn't have you know, Snapchat or whatever. So now, email's more like a two to three day response time. How private is email? Okay, I'm, I'm hearing Alexis and some other people are fooling themselves and thinking that the emails they send are entirely private. I've certainly seen emails being read by CNN on cable TV. Don't fool yourself thinking that your email is private. Everything, email is not a confidential medium. Email could ultimately become a public medium, but you are one reply all button away from regretting the uh, list of people that got that email. So what I'm gonna do with email is I'm gonna put it like this. You might be thinking of it, and other people in your uh, audience might respect it as a private medium, and they might not. Now we can anchor this as like a two to three day response time expectation. Whereas here, we had right now. How quickly are we expecting a response from a phone call? Yeah, somewhere more than email, somewhere less than right now. We'll call it one day. You call somebody, I know none of you, like, under the age of 27 leave voicemail anymore, but indulge me for a second. I call somebody, I leave a voicemail, I'm kind of expecting a call back within a day or so. Okay, what other channels do we have that we can now plot using email, phone, 911 as anchors? Okay, is Twitter public, private? Where would we put Twitter on this scale? If there was a never on this scale, Twitter is it. So somewhere in here, Twitter being very public, and perhaps never getting a response, we're putting Twitter. Now a Twitter direct message, that's different. How quickly are you expecting a response to a Twitter direct message? I'm with Kyle on this one. I think a direct message is more analogous to a text message than it is an email, and that a text message is a little bit more urgent than an email is. So we got 
somewhere in between email and phone, and somewhere not quite as public as email, and potentially more private than email, somewhere in this space is a direct message. Does that sound about right? Where we're anticipating, uh, shoot, I had a day here, so maybe I got this in the wrong place. We were uh, saying, well, maybe several hours. Less private than a phone call. Perhaps more private than email. And fitting in between this 911 and phone space. Is that the right spot for a direct message? You might direct message me to set up an appointment. But when we're actually meeting in real life, I think that's the most private and the most urgent of all of them. So I put it up there in the upper right. Maria. Interdepartmental mail. Oh my god, intercampus mail. I don't even use that. I don't even open that. It's like not even in my comm protocol. It's a possibility. So you'd say, uh, what's the expectation of response? And I put it somewhere in between two to three days and never. And uh, what's the expectation of privacy? It's got to be more private than Twitter but it's not necessarily super private, so it'll be somewhere in here. Uh, and this is a good question, because sometimes students ask me, how can I hand in my assignment? Well, we have CritBiz. But if we do, uh, if we don't have CritBiz in the class, sometimes they print stuff out on a hard copy, they slip it under my door, I'm like, what kind of protocol is that? Sometimes there are occasions where I have to use intercampus mail. Uh, when I have uh, students, in the class who are taking their exams at the in some uh, other center. Uh, they have a learning disability, they need more time, and their exam is on paper. They will intercampus mail that exam uh, to me, and sometimes it'll take a week. For the, uh, with the exception of that, that's the only exception I can think of, intercampus mail is not in our comp protocol. But it begs the question, have I left things out? <coughs> All right, now let's try and apply it. You want to communicate with me. What are your choices? You could choose Twitter. Are you going to get? A are you expecting a response? No, because Twitter goes all the way to never. What are the choices? Direct message. How quickly are you expecting a response? Yeah, that makes sense to me. You direct message me. Somewhere in the same day, you get an answer from me. What are your other choices? <coughs> you could email me. What kind of response time are you expecting? Don't email me if you got a deadline in an hour, because it just doesn't meet the, uh, the right expectation. Do you call me on the phone? No, don't do that. Uh, we could depart from the comm protocol if we have an explicit conversation about it. There might be an instance where I ask you to call me on the phone, in, that, in which case we've left the comm protocol. And I think we can do that as long as we agree. So now we have an explicit communications protocol. People are going to depart from the communications protocol, I guarantee, because it happens all the time. You might uh, add to this, you might say, well, you know, we have box in this class. And maybe there's something in here, like we can send a message or post a comment on box.